You are interested in the unknown, the mysterious, the unexplainable. That is why you are here. We are gathered here as advisors, as scientists. The kind of place we expect a ghost to like to walk around. Hey, we all know that we're going to die, baby. I'll help you. I'm something of a witch. Welcome. To Mission Spooky, I'm your fantastic host, JC. With me today, as per usual, the queen of everything herself, Kiki, and our local cryptid enthusiast, Cord. And is that a is that a British flag I see? Ha ha! This is where you take them. Oh, okay. <laughs> They're finally coming to take us back. Thank God. <laughs> Again. All right. So today we have. The brilliant, the one, the only, the, quote, Johnny Carson of the paranormal, Mr. Paul Bestel from Mysteries and Monsters podcast. Welcome, sir. Thank you for inviting me. I'm delighted to be here with you. We are so excited because I, well, I am a huge fan of Mysteries and Monsters. I have did a binge. Might have seen the numbers go up just slightly there. <clears throat> <laughs> I think I listened to 36 episodes in a row. It was, Yeah. Yeah, Zooks. Yeah, it was a lot of hours. <laughs> yeah, I do go on a bit. I went well. I went back. I went back in time. I went. I went back in time <laughs> in my DeLorean. It's like I didn't think I la- rambled that much. Jeez. <laughs> no, I do. <laughs> Being self-aware is a very important uh, trait. You know, admitting yeah. is the first step. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yes, it is. It is. Acceptance always helps. <laughs> Today, we are going to be talking about something cool we have not talked about yet. And this was requested by Paul, which is the Dover Demon. And in case our listeners don't know which Dover we're talking about, because there are many. This is going to be in Dover, Massachusetts, because I honestly thought it was going to be Dover, Delaware, but it wasn't. <laughs> that took a hot minute of, you know, geography. Yay. And then I had a special request because, as I've said many, many times before on this podcast, my family is originally from the Bradford area of England. And so you have a couple stories you're going to tell, which I'm very excited about. Uh-huh. We're going to pause for our sponsor. And when we get back, more with Paul Bestel. Hey there, it's Audrey, producer at Spike and Crown Studios. Now's your chance to support a 3D animated horror film and get some awesome rewards in return. Check out spikeandcrown.com and visit our Kickstarter to make a pledge. You'll get our cutest dog, Sancho, the heroic basset hound, in full plush form. He's super cuddly, has a magnet nose, and comes with a real pet collar. Best of all, you can get producer credit, limited edition trading pins, digital collectibles, and much, much more. Check us out at spikeandcrown.com. That's S-P-I-K-E-A-N-D-C-R-O-W-N. There's a link at the top so you can visit our Kickstarter page, watch the trailer, claim these amazing rewards, and become a horror film producer. Isn't that cool? Once again, it's spikeandcrown.com, and we're live on Kickstarter. Go ahead, guys. Who wants to go first? Are we going to talk about Dover Demon first, or... I would like to talk about Dover Demon first. <laughs> yeah, I actually did research about the Dover Demon, which is more than I've done for <gasps> literally <laughs> any other episode we have <laughs> ever recorded. The thing. <laughs> I am so proud of you, JC. I'm going to give I you know. a star. I, oh, I get a star. It's my first one. If I, We've I'm been gonna recording for one three one years. Team. If I didn't give that last puppy treat to freaking Reggie, I would have given it to you right now. I don't want a puppy treat. It's turducken flavored. <laughs> oh, okay. I'm interested. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. So Dover Demon. Come on. Who's going to Who start? You guys did your homework. in Dover, but not, hear me out, a demon in any way, shape, mm-hmm. or form. That you know of. Oh, no, I 100% know it's not a demon. <laughs> I'd be willing okay. to stake my career in the paranormal as big as it is, uh, that Ooh. it's not an actual demon. <laughs> <laughs> what, a, what, a, what a blow to society. <laughs> JC leaving the paranormal community. 
Uh, I'm going to go cry in a corner for 12 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you're just as big as I am, bud. <laughs> True. All right, come on, let's go, JC. Oh, Tell that was... What was the sightings like? Do you know about you know, the sightings? How many the... years ago was it? What year was it? Um, well, it was when you were about 23 back in oh the 70s. God. <laughs> incorrect. Yikes. What do you mean incorrect? I was not 20 in the 70s. Oh, but it did happen in the 70s. <laughs> yes. I'm like, did I get the decade wrong? <laughs> <Just> starting out <laughs> decades off. so bad. Yeah. I thought you were going to impress me and, and tell us all it was April the 21st and 22nd of 1977. No, I'm not that good. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> And she's like, I did research immediately outclassed. <laughs> yeah. Who was the chief researcher? Very, very famous cryptozoologist. Come the, um, mm -hmm. I don't remember names. Come on. You guys know I'm not good at this. Uh, <laughs> Lauren Coleman. There it is. Very I good. It down. Okay. Good for you. Keep going. I'm not used to doing research. So like having to f go back and forth and organize it. Oh, this is rough. Kiki, how do you do it? <laughs> I write it out. <laughs> yeah, I wrote some things like Dover Demon, not a demon. <laughs> uh, oh my god. Not a moose either. <laughs> Why don't you go? I'm done. I'm gonna say <laughs> I'm done being shamed. <laughs> no, I'm never done being shamed. I'm just I need a break. <laughs> Well, I, I like stories like the Dover Demon because there's always some strange things that go on in certain small towns in the US. There, I've always been really attracted to these really odd little creatures that turn up for no reason. And the Dover Demon's definitely one of them. It's, it's like the Enfield Horror or the Fresno Nightcrawlers. They're just these really <laughs> odd creatures that turn up. Um, some are real and or allegedly real and some clearly aren't. But um, <laughs> the Dover Demon's a very odd one. And, and like JC says, it, it's probably most famous for being one of Lauren Coleman's first ever cases, which he covered in his Mysterious America book. So it's um, it's an odd one, because it's one of those that just happens over two two or three days, and that's it. It's done. It's finished. It's all over, and enough's enough. Right, and I think that's what is so weird about it for me. I did... <laughs> Man, I'm going to start off like on a really bad foot here, because cause I, I listened to a couple other podcasters talking about Dover Demon, because I always do that too. Read the stuff, listen to what other people have to say. And uh, I won't throw anybody into the bus, but there was one podcast that wanted to talk about the possibilities of Dover Demon somewhere else. So I was really intrigued by that. I was like, oh, because that made sense. I mean, mm -hmm. we'll, we'll kind of get into a little bit of the, about the sightings. But one of the things at the end of it is that it seems like everyone saw them like in a line, like in a, in a like if you looked on a map, it was like one after another as if it was traveling. Mm -hmm. And then you have the this shows up in Rochester, New York, then a little bit of ways away from Dover, Massachusetts. But yeah, you know, it's possible. And I don't know if you heard about this one, Paul, but it's the beast of purple trail mm -hmm. no i've not heard of that um that's probably a good thing um <clears throat> <laughs> yeah that's where kiki's just gonna get out the gate and be like we're gonna talk about the demon but let's just, just let's let's get this out of the way because um beast of purple trail is is not real guys i hate i hate to say it Seems as though somebody made a creepy pasta and put it up on the cryptozoology wiki. I did a lot of research on this, tried to find more information about it because I thought it was very intriguing that it miraculously looked very similar to the Dover Demon. And that is because someone took a picture of the Dover Demon and put it on the website as the Beast of the Purple Trail. <laughs> God. But at least they had enough sense to be like, someone kind of questioned that on Reddit. And then the person was like, oh, yeah, I couldn't find a picture of what it looks like. So I just used this as reference. <laughs> okay. Uh huh. Seems fine. Are no pictures <laughs> at all, not even drawn out, nothing. It's described as an alien like creature that, quote, resembles the Dover demon. Uh, about the only true thing I got out of this is that it says that in 2017, there's a storm that comes and that there's supposedly this archway that leads you through the, the opening of the Purple Trail. Purple Trail is supposed to be a walking trail in the Durand Eastman Park. And it's 
it says Rochester, New York. That's true. Only there is no purple trail in the Duran Eastman Park, guys. It's actually in a different park that's a 13 minute drive away from the other one. So that also makes me a little suspect that they couldn't even get the actual location right. <laughs> couldn't find any pictures of this archway whether it was there prior to the storm or after, then there's a claim that some mysterious hands remade the archway. Yeah, I don't have any pictures of the remade archway either. <laughs> there's no witness statements. There's, I, I, I got nothing. Yeah. So I'm, I'm, I'm going to say in my mind that if the Dover demon sightings are correct, uh, then yeah, I think they just disappeared. I think whatever it was just disappeared. I don't think it went anywhere else. Which makes it even more mysterious to me because, you know, somebody was trying to connect some dots there with a fake, a fake cryptid. And I, oh, I, no, someone would do that. <laughs> <laughs> Who'd have thunk it? Yeah. 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 <laughs> no one makes fake TikTok cryptid videos either. <laughs> <laughs> Never yeah. seen one. I, I haven't, I haven't done that. Even as a joke, that's <laughs> <laughs> Bigfoot sign. <laughs> I don't even have to search them out. People send me them and go, have you seen this? <laughs> no. That's what JC does to us. <laughs> so, oh, it's you, is it? So, so right out the bat, before we even like get into what happened with these sightings, do you think, do you guys think that these like one timer cryptid appearances and stuff like this one and flatwoods monster and stuff do you think that's more like a kind of getting into henry zabrowski territory here like psychic phenomena since they're like never seen again you know what i mean like is this like a multiple people having the same psychic phenomena or do you think this is a might be a real entity i guess for for me i'll go first because it's i'm the least educated so i'll set the bar very low <laughs> and then kiki <laughs> and paul can give their opinions <laughs> i don't know if i'd consider it psychic phenomenon i would say it's pro in my opinion probably fey or extraterrestrial so i'm not saying it's a gray because i don't think it fits certain characteristics of a gray alien but for the dover demon i would vote that it's some kind of fey and or uh, Native American folklore creature. I'll get into that stuff later. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I'm sorry. What? <laughs> what do you mean? What? <laughs> you you actually? Wow. Okay. Because because we did that whole episode on on puck wedgies, and you were very like anti anti puck wedgie and. No, but then I had a puck wedgie encounter the next fucking oh, night. Okay. And I changed my tune. <laughs> Kiki. He learned his we had a whole episode were... about how I learned my lesson and I'll never talk that kind of shit again. <laughs> <laughs> now he takes the subject extremely seriously. <laughs> yeah. Because I drove three hours north into some crazy wooded area and didn't realize what I was doing. Listen to that episode. Somewhere down below. Don't remember the episode number. <laughs> <laughs> it's down there somewhere. You just got to listen to all of them till you find it. <laughs> yeah, wow. just search for the puck budgie. It's that one. Well, okay. Uh, I'm actually interested in what Paul thinks. I'll, I'm going to hold mine for, for later. I think JC's hit on something there because I think, along with as Cord mentioned, the Flatwoods Monster, I tend to think because of its uniqueness. I feel it would be more explainable as some kind of extraterrestrial visitor, personally. Right. I would tend to agree. I think because it's so odd, and because it's not reappeared anywhere, really, because this is the often, as, as you mentioned about diving into these strange purple trail stories that have no basis in any fact or witnesses or anything, that because it's so odd, it tends to... Because even when you talk about psychic phenomena or the fae or whatever, they tend to have a trend or they, they, they will be certain types of creatures that are seen over and over again all around the world or wherever people have these belief structures. And so because of this creature and its description of looking, I think once again it's one of those that people say, well, it looks a bit like this. Yeah, but it doesn't look just like it. It's, it's, it's different enough to be... Unique, and I think that's what's always stood out to me about this particular case, is the fact that it is rather unusual. Yes, it looks a bit like a couple of other things, but what other people report don't act or move in the way this creature did, especially as Bartlett 
Will Bartlett, the, the first guy that saw it cl- climbing over that wall. Yeah. Who also is one of those amazing witnesses that you have who seems to be quite good at drawing, which I've always been very annoyed about, these witnesses. <laughs> <laughs> very ta- not only have they seen a cryptid, they're very talented artists, which is a double whammy for people like me. So uh, <laughs> maybe that's why he, he, he saw it, because it knew it would be able to render it beaut- so beautifully. <laughs> I mean, fair. To, I guess to explain for listeners who haven't seen the picture yet that he's referring to, it, it's a very good drawing. It looks very close to a gray alien, but it's on all fours and it has these big spindly freaking fingers and it's like wrapping its fingers around everything instead of just like walking on stuff it almost looks like it has four hands instead of two feet and two hands the way he drew it mm. like i also feel like the head is a little different than a gray alien like it looks more like a light bulb than just like an yeah, oval. It, looks, it looks more bottom heavy than yeah and i'll put links to those photographs too since that's you know you have to really see it so bartlett's sighting When he sees this, he's kind of seeing it in headlights. And he thought it originally was a cat or a dog. But Mm. then it was the spindly fingers that seemed to be holding on to a a rock like that it was on top of. And that's what definitely set it apart. It wasn't to him. This is not a dog. This is not a cat. This is some weird thing. And um, he was with other people. And I, I thought this was the one where the friends turned around and went back. Or is that? I yeah, heard that did. somewhere else, and I didn't write that. I didn't write it down after I was like, "She." No, they did. They went part. back, and it had gone. Okay, so the that's the first one, right? Because I know this. There's like multiple sightings. I thought the first one was the one where they actually turned around and went back, uh, but they didn't get out of the car. Yeah, that was the thing. It had, he said, a, a sandpapery like skin texture, and that it was a peach color. Mm-hmm. Yeah, just really super weird looking, and that that elongated shape of the face which you'll see if when i share the the drawing of it so yeah just super weird looking but yeah you do you do think alien in nature and that's what set everybody well set him off especially was it this is not normal this is not supposed to look this way it also had big eyes very round lidless eyes that were supposedly um like a orange color Mm. no green eyes i thought it was green eyes He's he said it oh, was orange. Said yeah, orange. yeah. Other people said green. That that was. Yep. Yeah. You'll get a different uh, a different take on the eyes from different people. His his was orange, so I thought I'll get in. I'll get into that later. <laughs> did did they think it was a cat because of like eye shine, or did they mention anything about that? Like I think it was because the size was about like uh, a cat to small dog. And they just saw something moving in the dark as they're driving. And so they just assumed it was one of those two things. And then as the light shone on it, they're like, that's not. Gotcha. At least that's how I took it. Mm. I'll get into at the end for the explanations of what, you know, other people thought it might be. Mm. (laughs) Oh, Paul, (laughs) you you and I, yeah, you're going to you're going to laugh at that because I'm sure, you know, you've seen the quote explanations of what it might be. And it's always the same job over and over again i think it's a wendigo actually Uh, (laughs) oh you're right you're right i'm sorry it's a skinwalker guys don't get me started (laughs) i just calm down yeah if if this if this happened now people would say it'd be a chukacabra yes (laughs) i was trying to make that joke earlier too he was (laughs) yeah right before you came on paul he literally made that joke about the show i was like ah (laughs) <laughs> the, the, picture, the picture does have a bit of a resemblance like smaller eyes and less spiky but you know now what you see here is the kinda. northern american chupacabra <laughs> <laughs> the massachusetts genus right hey don't actually don't knock it that's sort of funny in a way you know because what if i'm just you know you got to think about it. So this first sighting, this is April 21st, 1977. I was not 23, JC. I was a kid. Thank you. Um, <laughs> uh, Bill Bartlett's 17 at the time that he sees this. It's about 1030 at night, too, just, just so we get the, the feel for what's going on here. Because the next one is John Baxter, and he's going to be seeing this about two hours after mm. Bartlett's sighting around midnight and he's walking on a road shoot the first one i forgot to tell you guys that was on farm street in dover and then he sees it on miller hill road 
a lot of people that have talked about this have sort of made fun of it a little bit, but I don't know anything about Dover. I can only tell you what would happen here. I live out in the woods, so there's no way that a 15 year old is going to be walking on this (laughs) road at midnight. Oh my gosh, no. Not even in 77, okay? But it's a small town, right? So he's apparently walking home from his girlfriend's house, 15 years old, at midnight. He thinks he sees a shadowy figure at first. And this is the kid who thinks that it's actually a friend of his. Yeah, because he got a fully shaped head or something, didn't he? (laughs) Right? Yeah. And he was was a smaller kid with a funny shaped head. Yeah. And he's like, "Ah, that's got to (laughs) be... Oh, yeah. That's got to be that big-headed asshole. <laughs> <laughs> but that's 100% true. He claimed that his head was bigger than normal, and he thought it was MJ, so he calls out, Hey, MJ, is that you? Of course, he gets no response. He keeps walking until he's uh, pretty close to it. He figures between like some, about 15 feet or so. He calls out again, and nothing happens. But then he starts seeing this creature, and it's got a really big head. Again, we see the spindly fingers. This time, it's got his fingers around a tree trunk. He could see that the eyes were glowing. He did not mention any specific color, though, but that it was just a glow to it. He did not make a drawing of it. Uh. Then we've got Abby. Oh, my gosh. I should have looked up how to say her last name. Brabham. Problem. Yeah, I was, I was going to go with problem. I was like, I think that's how we say it. <laughs> um, oh, boy. She, again, was another 15-year-old. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of teenagers wandering around this town. Yeah, man. This was the 70s of America, okay? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I have to go I have to go back to uh, the first one again real quickly to Bartlett because there was also the mention that, oh, well, these were kids driving around at night. It was the late 70s. I guess they were just high on marijuana and that's why they saw all this stuff. That damn hooch. <laughs> oh, boy. I have yet to have that good of marijuana that I would start seeing stuff like that. Yeah, let me tell you now. I'm, I'm not a, happening. I'm a medical ca- card carrier here, so I'm legal. And uh, so I... I I buy medical grade stuff and nope, haven't seen nothing like this yet. <laughs> Plus, if if anything, marijuana is probably used more now than it was in the seventies. So yeah. surely more people would be seeing strange things, would they not? If if that explanation works, which obviously marijuana doesn't really cause hallucinations in the vast majority of users. I yeah, it, it's super rare. It's used more and it's chemically stronger now. Like, <laughs> yes. Yeah, it's probably not actually knocked off potpourri that they bought off some dodgy <laughs> kid at the, the local arcade in 1977. <laughs> All getting high on uh, time. <laughs> right? Oof. Yeah, a little bit of oregano, a little bit of thyme, a little rosemary in there. <laughs> and then you're like, were... shoot, I sh- <laughs> I'm supposed to be making chicken, not yeah. smoking it. Yeah, I'm wondering why they're why they've got <laughs> munchies for pasta. Mm. Right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh goodness! Yeah. So I, I just also a long, long time ago. This is not a recommendation for doing drugs of any kind in particular. I'm just saying I have had hallucinogenics, things that are supposed to actually make you see stuff, and I still didn't see anything. <laughs> So I'm disappointed <laughs> that, you know, apparently I should have been seeing Dover demons and I haven't. I want my money back <laughs> from 30 years ago. It's like the explanation that people are drunk if they see UFOs, which, uh, you know, I've, yeah. I've, I've, yeah. I've run bars and nightclubs. None of my regulars ever said, oh, I got absolutely hammered last night. I was seeing UFOs everywhere. <laughs> People always go straight to the alcohol when it comes to Bigfoot stories, too. Well, how much booze were they drinking in that trailer in the woods? A lot, but that doesn't mean something wasn't throwing rocks at them. <laughs> alcohol doesn't make you hallucinate like that, man. Yeah. <laughs> You're just going to pass out. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Well, they always, that's one of the excuses a very famous skeptic puts forward about the Hopkinsville incident that everybody was that drunk, including the children. Yes. <laughs> that, they were, that they were hallucinating these alleged bulletproof owls that were attacking them for several hours. I can't I can't attest to how much there is to do in Hopkinsville because I've never been there, but I can't imagine that they just 
allow all the children to get that fucked up too. <laughs> it's not true because the, the woman who was the head of the family was completely teetotal and refused to have alcohol in the house. So none of them had uh, had a drink. Yep. Well, there you go. Uh, by oh my God, I lost my I lost it when you said Sorry. bulletproof owl. So because <laughs> <laughs> you know oh, they man. shot at him. You know they shot at him. <laughs> <laughs> they must have been owls. Everything is an owl. Oh my gosh. Okay, so <laughs> speaking of owls, so Abby, Abby Brabham, she uh was again 15 years old, and she's in the car with her boyfriend. They're on Springdale Avenue the next night. And she sees a creature that she thinks it looks a lot like a monkey to her, mm. but without hair and has a tannish beige uh, color to it. And she does not see a nose, ears or a tail, though, which I think is actually pretty important as well. And um, again, at the end here, when we talk about some of the de quote debunking. Yeah, it's it. you know what an actual monkey looks like. and. Mm. You know, like her for her to be like, yeah, it, it was monkey like, but again, I'm imagining those long, spindly looking legs, maybe, you know, mm -hmm. and she's not seeing the ears, nose, or tail, which I think is sort of important. She's the one where the eyes for her are glowing green, mm. seems to have a color change, maybe. But the investigation, of course, it's Lauren Coleman that does it. I don't know. I mean, I'm definitely one of those people that I, I totally believe that they all saw something. Mm. You sure. know, like what it is, I don't know, but I can tell you the explanations that were given hmm. from the muggles, if you will, <laughs> <laughs> from what it was, um, doesn't make any sense either. Uh, that, that doesn't matter. Wait, uh, uh, albino moose baby that just happened to be in somebody's private collection in the town of Dover where no one had a private collection of albino moose babies just <laughs> happened to get loose uh, you don't you don't know how many weird ex eccentric rednecks they have out there they, they could have albino moose <laughs> <laughs> at least they didn't blame it on a circus train crash Thank <laughs> yes <laughs> The rare case that that wasn't blamed. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, the one time that someone literally is like, it might have been a hairless monkey, but there's no train crash full of monkeys. So <laughs> there you go. For the first one, I absolutely love this one, that it's a horse foal. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We, we mix that up. Long fingers, right? <laughs> Just... mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Here's my take on horse foal. So uh, there are about 10... Today, there's like 10 large horse farms within the range of where the sightings took place. Apparently, Dover, a small community at the time, was about 5,000 folks-ish. The joke was that there was actually more horses than people. Okay, that's fair. Except that nobody was missing a foal. Yeah, and like horses aren't cheap. You it's know a whole a ass horse, thank you. <laughs> It's yeah. a whole ass horse that's missing, guys. Like, there's no one that's going to let their baby horse out and be like, oh, shit, we lost the baby horse. Please call the cops and let them know that it's missing. That's a big deal. Also, in the United States, a horse is pretty much like, I don't know, the third or second animal that we learn about as a child. Yeah. We got a whole game for that called Speak and Spell. Yeah. <laughs> so, like, when you talk about it being a baby horse, when you look at the head, I can see it. But mm -hmm. when you get down to the hands, <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Like I, they specifically talk about the long fingers that wrap around things. Like right. Well, Cord, what you don't know is baby horses. All horses are actually born with hands, and it's us that chop the hands off and put on hooves. Oh, thanks. And they probably just thanks hadn't for... gotten that process. Thank you so much for that nightmare tonight, JC. <laughs> that's that's what I needed. <laughs> <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> yeah, they're not putting horseshoes on them, they're putting hooves on them. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah. That's <laughs> what the nails are for. Well, the horseshoes, they actually keep the fingers from growing back. Yeah, yeah. They, they nail the shoes onto the fingertips. It's yep. terrible. <laughs> I do not know that. Yeah, that's common horse <laughs> knowledge. Uh, well, I guess I got to go back to being three now. Thanks. <laughs> also, 
I would say like a uh, a baby horse is a drastically different size than a cat. So mm-hmm. I don't know how they would like. It was think... a Maine Coon. It was a real big cat. <laughs> I do love me a Maine Coon. <laughs> okay, so the the next one we touched on, which is the baby moose. <laughs> Yes, the even larger four-legged hooved animal. <laughs> uh, okay, so this one is, if you're looking at just the face, baby moose, the moose in general, they do have like an elongated face, right? And they got kind of big eyes. Mm. And I thought about, okay, well, what is a what does a baby moose look like if it has mange, for example? Would it would the skin color be that peach color? Uh, no, it is not. Also, you can clearly see ears on it. Even with the mange, if like you know, if you're going to go down that particular route, and also they don't often appear in Massachusetts, <laughs> so it's kind of you'd actually see a horse before you'd see a baby moose or a moose at all in Massachusetts. Well, that's why it was the like somebody owned a moose farm. I don't know if that's a thing, but that's that's yeah. why I said it's a private collection, right? Because they they don't range in that area, and I mean m- moose even as baby moose have that big hunch behind their shoulders like Mm -hmm. you'd think that would probably stand out if somebody's looking at the thing and again they don't have long fingers and that too yeah (laughs) throw that out there you know uh so the other animals that were mentioned were a fox a bobcat or a dog and again if you sticking with the mange idea too you can look at any of these animals online and no matter what happens they don't have this the skin color that we're we're seeing you can still see their tails you can still see their ears and their nose uh, yeah and their and a nose yes so and the folks who saw them were saying that the animal was bigger than those right but smaller than a moose or a horse so it was like that in between thing also like mange doesn't for the most part mange doesn't completely make an animal hairless they're still going to have patches Sometimes I've seen the ones with the yeah. where bears get it and they actually are totally Completely hairless. Hair, yeah, yes. yeah. I shine though. This is kind of interesting because I hadn't looked this up before I until mm. this now. So the animal that has the orange glow to it though are either bear or owls. <laughs> hey! <laughs> well, here we go. It's always goddamn owls. I was like, son of a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> and owls famously have fingers. <laughs> oh boy. More so than a moose. Fair. <laughs> um the a deer does have uh light green, white or yellow eye shine. Thought that was kind of interesting. Mm-hmm. Uh raccoons have the bright yellow and a coyote wolf or dog is going to have like that white, just a white glow or possibly, you know, one that's, it doesn't really look like anything. Just looks like a, kind of like a glow to it. Mm. So that's why I picked a lot of those. Um, oh, and the bobcat has a, a yellowish white eye shine to it. So I'm just like, well, even if you were just doing the eye color alone, none of those animals fit the description of what anybody saw as far as I'm concerned. I mean, pfft. Deer uh, don't have fingers either. I mean, granted, raccoons do, but not like that. And I got nothing. Although, fun fact, moths also have orange-red glowing eyes. That's creepy. It's cool. And wolf spiders have a glittery white if you shine light on them. What if this is like a baby moth man? (laughs) I knew. You, see, I knew you were gonna go there if I told you that. I was like, "There we go, yeah. perfect." Baby Mothman, but before he went into the cocoon, so he doesn't have his wings yet. Oh my yeah. god! <laughs> <laughs> so, to be honest, that's more plausible than a pony, right? <laughs> Strangely enough, I, I'm not gonna disagree. <laughs> Yeah, well, when you get into cryptids, one of the things you don't realize you're going to end up learning about is eye shine in different animals. I didn't think 10 years ago I'd know the difference. Legit, <laughs> right? Legitimate, I was like, yeah. huh. Now, I did know that alligators glow red because, mm. yeah. I've, I've watched a lot of Crocodile Hunter. <laughs> <laughs> now, I just lived in North Carolina for 20 years. 
Oh, mm -hmm. I did. Enough. I did my thing. <laughs> <laughs> I know kangaroos have the same eye shine as humans. Ah, <gasps> get out! I didn't know that. That's cool. Oh. Yeah, which can be quite surprising in the outback when you think it's Steve. <gasps> oh, it's not. <laughs> it's a seven-foot roux coming to kick your ass. Yes, that is quite, actually pretty dangerous. Quite literally. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, as uh, as the videos of Roger, the famous one, will often demonstrate his terrifying <laughs> strength. <laughs> if, you've, uh, if you've never seen that, just Google Roger the kangaroo and watch him crush a tin bucket. Yeah, that's a frightening video. Yep. So that is it as far as the like mundane explanations that don't make any sense as far as I'm concerned. But this one is it, is it time for weird shit now <laughs> it's time yeah, for the weird shit. For weird shit the one thing that's always struck me about this is bartlett was convinced that it was an earthly animal he categorically said he didn't think it was an alien he said i know it's of this earth but i don't know what it is which i've always found a very definite statement from somebody who's seen something so peculiar did he ever say why you thought that i think it was the way it moved but I don't know. Does does he know how aliens move? I mean, it's just one of those things. <laughs> that's yeah. That's why I was thinking. Like, is he an alien expert? <laughs> He's like, I've seen an alien before. <laughs> I, grew in in <laughs> I grew up in Kecksburg. <laughs> oh my gosh! Yes. <laughs> it's nearly killed by the acorn from space. Oh my god. <laughs> Yeah, I just want to say, since we saw said that, I saw a freaking meteor explode in the atmosphere last night. This shit was cool as hell. Nice. Man. Anyway. I never get to see anything explode in the atmosphere. I'm it's very the upset. second time I've seen one now. The freaking just mm. a huge freaking green explosion in the sky. Just like, whoa! <laughs> yeah, we had the uh, the Perseids the other the other week. You could see them really well the other about six, seven weeks ago. That was that was pretty good watching those come in, because I think I saw about 20 in about an hour, which was fab. Ooh. All right, so the, the weird shit is, um, you could say Pukwudgie. <laughs> it's, it's the area, and then the uh, Managishi is, is the Cree folklore equivalent. It's a trickster race. So I want to read the description of that creature, because they're described as being child size. That fits. They have a large hair. Or they have a large head. Sorry, I was like, but what? they're also <laughs> like, one large hair. They're they're descriptive as being very hairy. Mm. Where this was, so is this the Managishi, but with mange? <laughs> like, <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> shut up, JC. <laughs> it's a, it's a well, mange no, but if you do look at the Native American legend, like it, it is described as a hairy creature. So I don't think that's necessarily what it is. Same thing with Pukwudgie. They're not known to be like furless or hairless. But you could play devil's advocate and say that if we are to believe that some of these creatures are biological in their origins, then surely mm -hmm. some of them may suffer from alopecia of some description. True, true, yeah. The Cree say that they have um, like a, a long, narrow face. And they don't have a nose. Mm. Oh, yeah. It fits like everything else you know? except the hairy part. That's what, mm. like, uh, oh, yeah. their name comes from hairy. But, well, <laughs> there's some conjecture about that. But yes, like, there, that's one Ojibwa word for hairy is mamia. But then again, it's also possibly the word for butterfly in Ojibwa. Mm. Yeah, so maybe maybe they are just miniature mothmen. Pupai. I mean, <laughs> we just go right back. Significantly more interested now. Yeah, I'm, let's go. Let's go find this thing now. <laughs> <laughs> I will have maybe my own baby mothman. Could be a, a shaved alba twitch or whatever they're called. That you yeah. Oh, yeah, could be an alba twitch. We did a whole. We did several episodes about Alba Twitch now. Mm. Yeah, they're one of PA's most famous cryptids. They are. They what are if it's an Alba Twitch with mange? <laughs> Those little Alba <laughs> How many times can we say mange in this episode? It's <laughs> a lot. I ain't done yet. <laughs> did it we throw an say... apple at you? Yeah, I was going to say, you should have tried to tempt it with some apples. <laughs> I got nothing. I feel like I believe them. I absolutely 100% think that they saw some some weird shit and we don't know what it is. The thing about their witness statements is 
if you ignore the fact that they're describing a creature that is baffling, none of them describe it doing anything ridiculous or unbelievable. They all describe it moving or running off or getting out there. They don't say it flew off into the sky straight up or it screamed at them or it tried to attack them or it had enormous talons. There's no exaggeration or anything that would make you think, well, that's just silly. If you take away the fact that they're describing a creature that nobody knows what they've seen, they're very mundane. Yeah. True. Yeah. I would think if it's a bunch of teenagers making up some crap for funsies, it would be an alien story. You know, a ship came down and there was a beam of light or something. Not like I saw it off on the side of the road and it ran away. Like, Yeah. Yeah. It ran off and hugged, hugged a tree and then disappeared. <laughs> it's the little things that often stick out with stories like that. I think when people don't go too far, then you think, well, it's a very simple story other than the fact that it's a very odd creature. Yeah. It's one of the more interesting things about this cryptid is it it's just walking and it walks in like a straight line too, which is interesting. All the sightings kind of happen in a straight line. They're mm. uh like a mile and a half from each yeah. other. Yeah. Yeah. Was that straight line pointing anywhere specific? <laughs> like where was it at? Um I think it was all by a body of water or like Oh yes. Something around there cuz there's there's some myths. I think that's why Another reason why people think it's like a Native American creature is it was always near the water. And I think one of them is related to water. Was it the Mamagishi? Yeah, the Managishi is yeah. uh, a trickster that usually does pl plays tricks on people on water. Like there's stories about people getting their canoes tipped over, stuff like that. Not necessarily, um, you know, like they're trying to drown you, but they're just having a good old time. Uh -huh. yeah. So my question that I've been thinking of from the beginning, right? These are all teenagers, who are obviously close to each other. Do these do these kids all know each other? Like uh, Dover is a small town. I would say that they probably all knew each other from school, but just because you know of each other in school doesn't mean you're you know right. I, I'm not gonna up with a hoax that has lasted fifty yeah. years. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna come up with an alien story with with the kid that's sitting next to me in social studies. I was just at, like. No, that's math I, class. I, I figured, <laughs> yeah, actually, yeah. I, I figured, you know, the first question that's going to come up is, you know, this is a bunch of teenagers in a small town. Like, are they just doing this for shits and giggles? Oh, you know? I believe that's what the police came out and said. That was yeah. a school vacation hoax. Yeah. Ah, mm. ah, see, there you go. But yeah, I think they knew of each other, but I don't think any of them would consider them to be friends. Right. Baxter and Bartlett knew each other from school, but they were not close friends and they had not spoken to each other at all about their sightings. But yet they both, you know, one drew it and the other one explained it and it looked exactly like what Baxter had drawn. So, or drone yeah <laughs> well, <boy. laughs> drew 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 drew, drew. <laughs> yeah because barlett was 17 baxter's yeah. 15 and, and abby is 15 as well 15. so i you know yeah and i don't think she n knew either one of them it doesn't mm, i didn't yeah, see I anything know. but like so what's the you know i was in high school i didn't have friends that were below me like in grade or it, age actually Not take many, that back. anyway uh, I I did, but it was a year. Yeah, when, you was, down, when you're two yeah. years down, it's like I don't know. It, you don't never know have you. a chance to talk to each other half the time. Yeah, because mm. you're in completely different classes. It's like, yeah, and and so, I was in I was in a much smaller school. Like Palmerton is not a big school at all. No, a mm -hmm. couple hundred kids max, like two hundred, three hundred. So you know, Coleman actually did say that they did not know each other well. None of them did. So yeah, just right. to, what I figured. That checks out. I, I know it's I know for any skeptic that would be listening to this story, that's probably gonna be the first thing they thought. Who's well, a bunch of teenagers? Yeah. Probably talked about it in school and made this a weekend, you know. But Coleman had actually pointed out and said that yes, this happened on quote a vacation week, but they actually didn't talk to each other. Whereas if they were in school, they may have had the opportunity to tell their stories to each other or at least have it go around. Mm. Ah, see? see so it's the opposite they're away from each other they're not at school this whole entire week yeah it's not like this is when you could just post it on tiktok or so <laughs> right know. yeah yeah 
Plus, back to the site was two hours after Bartlett's. Right. That is very close. Yeah, I don't know. And you know what, Paul? That's probably why I feel like it, the, the one thing that makes it genuine to me that they're not lying about anything is there isn't anything like super weird about it. It's like they're not trying to make this, uh, you know, some kind of news media, you know, whatever. It's it's just like, hey, man, I saw this weird ass thing. Yeah. Uh, it was just sitting there doing whatever. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because if it, if it is a tall tale, often people who tell tall tales can't stop it growing. It just gets sillier and sillier and sillier. And this has yeah. remained pretty as it was 45 years ago. Yeah. Yeah, that is the, yeah. 40, the 45th anniversary this year. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And plus as well, it's a small town, as, we've, as you, you guys have mentioned. You're not going to stick your neck out and say, oh, I've seen this really weird thing. And, you know, these are the kind of places where... Oh look, here's here's weird Bill. Here's, here's that guy that <laughs> saw that weird yep. creature the other week. You'd, yeah. you'd be putting and a target on your back. They tend to keep their cards closer to their chest when it comes to the small town people. They don't want to like talk about a lot of stuff like that too because of that. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. All right, I want to hear. I want to hear some stories about Bradford. Yeah. Story time. Okay, so everybody knows who Bram Stoker is. Heck yes. yes. So. Bram Stoker was a manager, worked in the theatre, and he looked after the most celebrated actor of the late Victorian period, which was a gentleman called Sir Henry Irving, um, who, to say was difficult, would be an understatement. <laughs> <laughs> um, and there's a lot of Irving in Count Dracula. Stoker certainly used him as, as part of the template of his creation, which is quite funny, as I'm discussing this i've just looked up and realized that dracula is staring at me from the bookshelf um <laughs> which is peculiar nice as stoker continued to to work for irving he wrote dracula but they still continued having a professional relationship so irving would tour the uk doing performances and, and acting all around and his final run was at the midland hotel where they were performing and he gave his last performance and he finished his speech at the end of the play had a stroke and was carried off into the foyer of the midland hotel where he passed away after an hour and so irving's ghost now resides at the midland hotel in bradford to this very day scaring the patrons as it's now a fully functioning hotel which has embraced its spookiness ever since so a lot of people think that the Midlands the most haunted location in Bradford. Now you've got the usual people being disturbed, knocking on doors, people claiming they see something walking up and down the stairs or around the foyer. Lots of weird things disturb the guests. So uh, it's um, a very popular location. Like I say, it's one of those places that's embraced its, its haunted history and uh, enjoys people coming to check it out. I'm in. One of other, Bradford's other notorious haunted locations is the wonderfully named Bowling Hall, or Boiling Hall, as some people like to call it, which is a property that someone has lived there for nearly a thousand years now. There's always been a large property there. I think the hall itself was built in the 17th century, and this is a beautiful manor house which has had a history of paranormal incidents that cover everything from poltergeists to ghosts to strange noises cryings reports people being woken in the night people hearing footsteps um, and it's also wonderfully got a, a smelly ghost that everybody says when they see it, it it gives off a very pungent odor that makes them feel nauseous you don't hear a lot about a stinky ghosts no not at all and also people have claimed to have caught photos of it interesting let's say the only time that i had an experience where there was any kind of smell with a ghost at all was at my grandparents house it wasn't really the house that was haunted it was more likely the property mm -hmm. they started having i mean well after the house was was built mm -hmm. they started having some issues you could hear or feel someone walking behind you and you'd mm -hmm. often smell pipe smoke mm -hmm. Like a you know sweet smelling, not your normal like cigarette. Yeah, and so they they did some research and found out that the property well they, they bought it from a widow. They kind of asked about well, can you tell us anything about the property? You know, is this 
what, what was going on. And she claimed that it was supposed to be where her husband and her were going to build their, quote, dream house. But he was a fisherman off of New Jersey. Mm-hmm. And then he drowned. My grandmother would always tell us that she felt like he was tied to the property somehow because this was where he wanted to be in his retirement that he never got to take. And so he just kind of would hang out at the house. And believe it or not, I smelled that as a child, that distinctive sweet odor of tobacco, not, you know, not some, not a cigarette, something that's definitely in a pipe. Mm. And you could feel you knew when he was around i'll just say he you know because maybe it was wrong you know now that you get into paranormal investigation stuff you're like well it doesn't necessarily have to mean that that's that guy but Mm. but he was always just hanging out it was never that spirit was never violent Mm. i think that's something we've lost in the in the modern paranormal that unfortunately everything either is either extremely violent or it's a demon which i don't understand having right. read, yeah. read about ghosts for the best part of ni- almost 50 years it's, it's this it seems to be a modern thing so whether even even the paranormal's pissed off at the way the world's going these days i'm not really sure but uh they never used to be this grumpy and i think it's it's also like uh you know if you see it inside it's a demon and or poltergeist if you see it outside it's the windigo or <laughs> like it's just that's how it is <laughs> <laughs> we we figured it out. We pinpointed it. Yeah. Oh, that's it. We can all go home now. Well done. Yeah. Well, we're done Glad with the I podcast. <laughs> this is our last episode. <laughs> but I know uh, when you emailed me, you you, uh, you mentioned a particular subject that I don't like to talk about unless I'm just laughing about it. So I I said I'd I'd rather talk about a couple of strange hauntings here in the UK, which might be something that you and your listeners will enjoy, which is these ghostly apes. Oh, yes. <laughs> I want to know about the ghostly apes. So we've got two very different types of hauntings here in the UK. One's in Wales and one's in Devon, I think it is, which both are allegedly haunted by the ghosts of one is a Barbary ape and the other is a chimpanzee. Mm. That's a frightening ghost. Mm. A chimpanzee well, a... ghost. Jeez. <laughs> well, I'll I'll get to the chimpanzee second because uh, that's probably the the oddest one. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so the one in Wales is is a documented fact that it was owned by a a, a gentleman who lived at at Carew Castle, Sir Roland Rees, and Sir Roland Rees was known as not being a very nice chap. And he had a pet Barbary ape that he had bought off some merchants and kept it on a chain to uh, essentially harass people who came to his house. Um, (laughs) (laughs) Wow. Why else would you get a monkey? (laughs) Precisely. And uh, it turned out that he ended up getting into a very heated argument with a local merchant called Horovitz, who's daughter had been seduced by sir roland's son and so sir roland could be bothered with the conversation and set the ape on him and he was viciously attacked and as the merchant managed to escape he he cursed sir roland and said that i i hope the ape kills you and by morning the servants arrived to discover that sir roland had indeed had his throat ripped out by his pet barbary ape who had absconded into the Welsh hills surrounding the castle. And now the ape is still allegedly sighted occasionally, usually on the staircase or I think the northwestern tower, um, usually as befits a ghost story on a dark and stormy night. But more often than not, people don't see the ghost, but they hear its horrific shrieking that causes people to awake in the middle of the night as the ape runs around the castle, letting everybody know it's still there. We're going to have to add the shrieking apes to the investigation techniques. We started we started doing little <laughs> side things of like, this is what a donkey actually sounds like. It does sound like <laughs> it's opening the seventh layer of hell. But yes. it's a donkey. <laughs> but it's just a donkey. We promise. Yep. <laughs> I think I could- I'd probably lose my shit if I had, to, if I heard a macaque which is basically what a barbary ape is in case anybody was trying to picture it I mean, yep that I thing Googled is it. Mm. they they call it a barbary macaque yeah so yeah that's what i'm saying it's like yeah it's a 
so if you're trying to picture what it looks like in your head, uh, yeah, they're really loud and obnoxious. No, thank you. They look pretty cute as far as monkeys go, but <laughs> I just yeah. saw a picture of one with their mouth open and they got some teeth, bud. Holy cow. Yeah. <laughs> Yes, you should never underestimate how a, the majority of the animal kingdom can kill you. Yeah. We're we're top of the food chain because we use tools because we are not, we don't have tools. <laughs> <laughs> like, built into us like other animals do. Why don't tigers need uh, knives? They have claws and really sharp teeth. That's why. <laughs> like... Okay, but chimpanzees use tools, JC, so they not only could rip your only face recently. off, you know, I'm, I'm not getting into this right now. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to get into that either. Have you guys looked up what William Barlett has been up to since the, the sighting? He's a painter. Yeah, he's, he's a really uh, good painter. I kept looking up Dover Demon shit and I found like a, an interview he did in 2006. And then he's like, oh, yeah, I do art. So are you saying that uh, you weren't listening to the incredibly nasty story about ghost apes, man? Um, or are you multitasking? We both know <laughs> that I can o I can barely do one thing at a time. <laughs> oh, goodness. OK. Well, you're in luck because the next monkey story is a bit more up your street. Nice. Okay. And I, I will listen to this one. I won't look up, continue looking up the regime and stuff. God. He's like the worst. I am absolute garbage. So, the other famous ghost of a chimp that we have here is at Althampton Hall, which is the traditional seat of the Martin family, who are one of those strange things that we have here that their coat of arms has a monkey on it, which is a bit odd. Ooh. And also, their motto is. If the Martin monkey looks at you, the Martin monkey sees you, which is quite creepy anyway. <laughs> um, <laughs> what? Yeah, oh my exactly. God. So, so this one, they had a pet chimp that lived in their house. And sadly, one of the daughters uh, was heartbroken and decided to wander off into the castle grounds, into the hall grounds rather, and found a, an abandoned room away from everybody. And hadn't noticed that the chimp, allegedly, I don't know how they know this, but apparently the chimp had alleged, allegedly got a feeling that she was feeling very sad. So I'd started following her around. Um, <laughs> I don't know how anybody knows this bit, as, as the ending of this story will, will explain. So she went off to this room and decided to take her own life and didn't realise that the chimp had followed her into the room where she'd locked the door. She took her own life and they weren't discovered for nearly a week by which time she had died and the chimp had died. From that point on, people began to see the chimp. Now, <laughs> people see this chimp and he seems rather excitable, shall we say, and likes to demonstrate how excitable he is by showing people um, his genitals and he likes to rub them vigorously as people watch him. Well, we all have our things, you know. <laughs> <laughs> So, so uh, yes, a lot of people have claimed to have seen a chimp acting rather rudely in front of them who just vanishes into thin air. <laughs> I like how you told me this was being more up my alley, and <laughs> a chimp uh, pleasing himself. <laughs> you know me so well, and I appreciate it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm, just, I'm just saying I've not come to this interview cold, JC. Good. Oh, Good. Man. <laughs> he did his research. Love it. Wow. So yeah, that's one of the weirder ghosts we've got in this country anyway. In my opinion, anyway. Yeah, I would agree <laughs> with your opinion on that. Uh... <laughs> yeah, because uh, I'm I've got a real soft spot for for animal ghosts because I I just find them quite peculiar because it, they're just there's just something very sweet about most of them because a lot of them are pets or things and i often wonder mm -hmm. how many people see animal ghosts and it's only when it's a creature that appears somewhere it shouldn't that people might think well that's a bit odd i never even thought about that and i hate it how many cats <laughs> have i seen how many dogs have i seen roaming the streets that were ghosts <laughs> yeah, i used to have a friend of mine who lived in a block of flats and he occasionally would find it he would see a cat in his flat 
and uh, nobody knew who the cat was. Nobody ever saw it leave. Nobody ever saw it arrive. It was just there. And then it would just disappear. And you just go, oh, well, that's a cat. And then he just started asking people. And nobody knew where this cat was coming from. But it was appearing in three or four flats. And they were on the third floor. Cats are crazy, though. <laughs> well, yeah. yeah. Like, I could kind of see a cat doing that. Well, I can as just, well. Yeah, as this, is the, <laughs> this is the apartment I've decided to lay in today. Deal yes. with it. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah. We've got a cat that comes around every morning at 9 a.m. for some biscuits. <laughs> yeah. They know how to live life. It sits on my back wall staring at us. And we don't know what it's called, but it's big and it's fluffy. So we call it Fluffy. That's a, that's a good name for him. Mm. It looks like a furry triangle. <laughs> Are you sure it's not a Wendigo, though? <laughs> oh. Uh, def definitely not here, not in Sheffield. We've got some strange things in Sheffield, but I don't think even Windigos have made it here yet. <laughs> Soon, <laughs> it was it was probably a skinwalker out on vacation to England. <laughs> yeah, skinwalker with mange is a. <laughs> yeah. There's there's enough people claiming to see strange things here that I don't wish to give any more uh, airtime to. <laughs> that's that's fair. Oh, but I'm gonna <laughs> I'm gonna do it, Paul. There we no go. Comment. No comment. <laughs> so I, uh, okay, I did promise you because I said if you shared me, in case you hadn't heard it yet, which is the candle shop and the Poconos. And we did a whole episode on kind of ghost animals of Pennsylvania, mm -hmm. which sort of led us down a path of that was a lot more dogs for some reason. Yeah. But this one was really interesting because they had done the research and found out that there was a doctor who lived in on the property, William Redwood Fisher. And he was a scientist. He was trying to find a cure for, I want to say it's yellow fever. That what I remember. Yellow fever sounds right. Yeah, it's been, a, oh God, that was last year. So I'm like, oh, I feel like it was yellow fever. Almost positive it was yellow fever. And it was because his own, uh, f one of his family members had died of it. So he was trying to, you know, discover the cure for it. Uh, he went to Columbia College. And so a lot of this information was from the website, right from the college. So I was like, oh, cool. So we could corroborate like all the stories and everything else. And that he had monkeys that he was testing. Mm -hmm. And apparently, you know, he lost some of them. They died. So it went from the original story that we found was that these monkeys were out in like the ghost monkeys, mind you, were out in the Poconos. So you could walk around the Poconos and see, quote, ghost monkeys, but then mm. kind of narrowed it down to it's really this basement in this candle shop, which the family that bought it, they turned it into this beautiful candle shop in town. And but they went down the basement, they kept hearing scratching noises and cage rattling and screeching like a monkey. Mm. And this turns out to be on. Uh, in the newspaper and i believe yes it was a t there was a tv show like a one of our local tv stations had run it for halloween the first time that it was kind of aired mm. she did go down in the basement and find a secret passage oh that it was kind of just boarded up and she opens the door and it led to a laboratory wow <laughs> and there were still cages there there was still some equipment you know, no notes or anything like that and that's what led them to do the investigation on the house and find out who this who owned it before, and then corroborate all that evidence that, yes, absolutely, he was a government-funded scientist. Uh, he chose to work out of his home, and yes, it was yellow fever and smallpox. He was working on both, and mm. that he had done these experiments, and uh, that possibly what they were hearing was ghost monkeys in the basement. <laughs> so. Oh. so what era was this then? Was this sort of the beginning of the 20th century? Uh, yeah, it was uh, 1890, uh, actually, I think it was 18, between somewhere between 1870s to 1891. Uh -huh. yeah. There was a lot of scientists yeah. running about in that period who were doing strange things with monkeys, because you've got that Russian guy, haven't you? Ilya Ivanov, who was trying to create a monkey-human hybrid. Have you heard about him, that guy? Oh, yeah. I am interested for sure. Didn't it? Yeah. Wait, of course, was like, that, what? <laughs> I thought that was for the Soviet. Yeah. Or was that yeah. just a Yeah, okay. Yeah, he was he was trying to uh, inseminate female chimps with human sperm. Oh. Yeah, cuz they wanted an army of these hybrids wow. to yeah. help the Soviets win wars against yes. anyone. Yeah. <laughs> Everyone. <laughs> yeah, that's fair. <laughs> yes, the, the the orangutan nation. That's what they wanted to do. <laughs> wow. 
wanted to take the Pacific. Look. Yeah. What was um, the name? I'll have to look into that. <laughs> Ilya Ivanov. But uh, they did it a few times. There was a few of them. I know they did it in the 50s, some really weird animal experiments, grafting like dog heads onto other dogs, so dogs had two heads and things. And then there is footage and documents to, to support this. It's not just one of those things you read about and there's no no evidence. It's... Uh, it was a big thing at the end of that that era, the sort of the end of the nineteenth century, early twentieth. You know, people trying to uh, inject monkey genes into into old rich people to to give them the uh, elixir of uh, eternal youth and things yeah. like that. And obviously, there's a Sherlock Holmes story about that very subject. Yes, that's so weird. Mm-hmm. And oh my gosh, I was, oh, Ford's well, like I'm going down a rabbit hole right now. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> well, if they're also, you know, finding mummies and grinding them up and then eating them for mm-hmm. eternal life as well. So, you know, yum. That's that's great. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that seems like it's very healthy. Just in case anybody wants to to know further, we did a I I did a whole thing on the uh King Tutankhamun quote curse. <clears throat> yeah. Well, ironically, it's the anniversary of his the tomb's discovery today, isn't it? Tutankhamun's it was discovered is. today. Yes. One of the uh, most, probably one of the most famous alleged curses in, in the supernatural history, I would imagine. For sure. Yeah. Though Kiki doesn't think it's a curse. Sometimes people just die. Well, uh, yeah, I think <laughs> I don't particularly think there's anything to all that. <laughs> just think. Thank the end you. Because it's one of those where it happens over like 30 years and that yes. just seems to be people go- getting old. Yeah. <laughs> Right. Uh, <laughs> Curse with old age. You wait long enough, you're bound to find some misfortune. <laughs> well, what is that movie, uh, The Men Who Stare at Goats? Yes. Where the dude walks up to another dude and he like touches him on the nose, and then everyone's like, Oh my gosh, he just killed you. And he's like, No, he didn't. I'm still alive. No, you're going to die one day. <laughs> and then like it breaks the dude. And of course, we're humans, so of course we're going to die. <laughs> like but as we found out though boys it was not the curse of king tut it was actually alistair crowley the whole time (laughs) always always Uh alistair as soon as you get into magic stuff so um (laughs) or uh poltergeist and demons indoors uh mm-hmm. skinwalkers and uh windigos are outside and then anything magic is crowley yeah, these are the magic. five things of the paranormal <laughs> <laughs> man well, we're on a tangent today aren't we huh? a little bit <laughs> if it doesn't have hair it has mange <laughs> <laughs> well and crowley was bald so make that make that what you will Ooh. a human with mange <laughs> that's fair that's fair <laughs> Yeah. Strangely enough, I on uh, on Monday I nipped to uh, the famous witchcraft bookshop in London called the Atlantis, which is where Crowley used to buy his books from. Oh, nice oh, synchronicity! Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's Little also one. the birthplace of the modern pagan movement here in the UK. Their coven was based there. It was lovely, yes. really nice. Had a nice chat with the owner. That's on my list of to visit. Mm. Fabulous, beautiful, but lovely people. Really, I could have spent hundreds of pounds in there. But spent enough <laughs> <laughs> and left so it was wait uh, pounds of what well uh, pa- pounds the Eng- uh, english currency uh, i know don't, being don't. A butt. <laughs> i know you were i just ignored it <laughs> oh, right okay, good <laughs> that's what we do too see paul knows <laughs> He's listened to other episodes. The currency you should have. Uh, <laughs> right. Mind you, at the minute, it's probably better to have a dollar in your pocket than a pound, but never mind. <clears throat> Thanks, Liz. Back to Liz Truss again. <laughs> <laughs> we brought it back around. Ah, geez. Full circle. Yes. Congratulations, gentlemen. We did it. <laughs> But I mean, one of the other things about your your relatives' old stomping ground as well, Kiki, is obviously the the uh, black shuck giant dogs. <gasps> yes, and legends that you that yes, they yes, have yes. round here. Because um, obviously, a lot of people in the US might think we that they're just called black shucks or the black dog. But in Yorkshire, there are actually three different names for them, depending on which part of Yorkshire you live in. I heard that actually. Giant trash, Padfoot, or Bargeist. I like Bargeist. 
Mm. So it's my um, favorite name of the three for sure. I like Padfoot yeah. too, but I think that's because of Harry Potter. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, they're all there's uh, quite a few that have been sort of absorbed into popular culture, and that's where Rowling got that from because that's our, our particular one. Padfoot's more sort of North Yorkshire. Um, round Bradford is is Bargeist, and they're not really sure where it comes from. There's three sort of origin stories for it, none of which make much sense because they all kind of talk about them being based in in the Germanic language, which Bradford doesn't really have a history of a large German immigrant population. So we're not really sure why people say that. But um, but yeah, there's there's uh, there's loads. I mean, some are called Scrickers as well and Trash. So there's there's loads. The first time I ever heard of Black Shook at all was from the very first ghost story book that I ever read. I actually just talked about this a couple episodes ago for Spooky Season, mm -hmm. which is the Ghost in the Valley book. And that's around ghost stories from New Hope, Pennsylvania and the surrounding area. Mm -hmm. And if I remember the story correctly, the girl is walking home and she keeps seeing a big black dog walking with her like it'll just come out of nowhere and then like follow her her first instinct was that she was a little afraid of it and then one day she's trying to cross a road and isn't really paying attention and the dog bolts out in front of her and basically stops her from getting hit by a car mm. and she goes home and she tells her parents this and it turns out her, her grandfather was from england and he's like oh that's actually the black shook but maybe it followed us over here kind of attitude towards it, right? Which we, we mm. get that a lot here <laughs> with like, yeah. and I had no idea that that was uh, an actual thing. I always thought it was just a, like a legend from here. And then I was like, oh no, I'll be darned. That's really cool. Of course, I was like 10 when I'm reading that. Yeah. But There are two distinct type of, of Shook stories. There are either like the Guardian protective ones like that one, or there's the ones where people are chased. But they're never caught. They're just chased. Having fun with them. Just, ah, gonna get you. <laughs> yeah. yeah. We get that a lot in, in alleged dogman encounters, don't you? I've yet to hear of a witness that says it caught them. A lot of people seem to think that they're being toyed with, don't they? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. We had one, this place called Hawk Mountain, mm. where it's like a difference between, like, saying, again, when to go. Um, <laughs> 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 like, oh, here we go. <laughs> but... The description of it definitely fits more of a dog man. And I think it was two different encounters that we talked about in on that particular mountain path. And both instances are one of yeah, that you feel like they're messing with you. Not not gonna harm you in any way. Mm. Uh except that the one guy did have a dog with him at the time. Like I think it was his German shepherd, if I remember correctly. I think so. Mm. And yeah, he felt a little uh, threatened but he felt like it could also be the dog himself like his dog per mm. being protective so if the haunch is up and you, it sees it which I always like those stories because you've got your pet there who is clearly attempting to protect you from something that mm. it may see before you yep. then you see said thing and then now we're in it you know <laughs> so mm. Pennsylvania is one of those strange states as well because you've got dogman stories, but you've also, I mean, I mean, you've got a werewolf cemetery allegedly as well in in your state. Oh yeah, Is oh yeah. We're, yep, we're gonna. Uh, I threatened to send J JC there and do the the thing. Wait, is that Don't where you you're supposed to walk around yes. three times? And yes. yeah, yeah, I'll do it. I don't care. <laughs> I mean, I'll watch him do it. I, yeah. That's what you said last time too. <laughs> you're, you're like, I'm just gonna go and I'm gonna watch him. <laughs> yeah, I'm, like, I'm gonna be the one going come on just do it he's like i don't wanna do it <laughs> no i'll definitely i'll do it there will be i will have so many flashlights that like they'll be able to see me from the international space station <laughs> but i'll do it <laughs> <laughs> you're gonna bring all the flashlights and i'm gonna cut all the power to them <laughs> the batteries <laughs> make sure you film it and send it to chad lewis because he loves that kind of thing if you've got a, 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 a How cursed area ironic because chad's going to be joining us in two weeks <laughs> ah fabulous yeah he's got I'm a, so excited. a new uh new winter themed collection coming out hasn't he yes and that's what we're going to talk about and i i already pre-ordered it so yeah 
Well, we're, we'll talk a little bit about that coming out. And then I was actually, again, I'll see, I'm just, I get inspired by Paul a lot, guys, seriously, because um, I read his book on um, the Lumberjack stories. Yeah. <laughs> so the hide fun. behind from your, your yes. the woods as well. I love that one. That's one of my favorites, the hide behind. <laughs> creepy AF. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah yeah i hate that's that's a actually like terrifying story i, I don't like to hide behind yeah it's a it's going to be a an, an interesting collection this new one of chads because morgan knudsen's done all the illustrations for it as well oh that's awesome i actually didn't catch that yeah she's d she did a couple in the lumberjack book i love those so that well, book is an, awesome another sickingly talented multi-talented person in the paranormal <laughs> No, right? joking. M Morgan's amazing. She's fab. Yes, and you've had her on your show, so I highly suggest. Well, I mean, duh, I highly suggest watching watching your show. Yeah, sure, listening to your show anyway. But yeah, Morgan's been on there. Chad's been on too, and I love every time he's been on has been hysterically funny and very informative. So yeah, Chad's Chad's a great guy. So getting back real quick to the Hans Groff Cemetery, mm. not even buried there. He's interred somewhere else. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. <laughs> I was like, so you, the cemetery is named after you, and you decided to be buried somewhere else. He's very humble, okay? <laughs> wow. That'd just be weird if he was buried. Uh, you know, all the other ghosts would think that he's special, so he just decided to go somewhere else. <laughs> yeah. But it's a, it's a very old cemetery, and it's one that you can visit it, but you have to be kind of aware that there's people's houses around it too mm. so they just ask you to be like you know be kind you know don't don't go out there and be dumb because you know some people do that if you ever go to a, a cemetery be kind have respect it, right please but uh, there's only 31 headstones there and the oldest one is 1797 wow yeah it's a very old family cemetery that doesn't have the dude buried in it that's named after yeah. I do like a good cemetery. I mean, probably because when I grew up, I lived in a converted vicarage across the road from a cemetery. So um, I've always found them deeply fascinating places. I like to, if I go anywhere, I always have to, and there's and there's one in close proximity because you can just walk into them here in the UK, apart from a few notorious ones like <laughs> Highgate Cemetery <Yes. laughs> with the vampire. <clears throat> yeah. <laughs> yes. Once I get mine started, maybe you'll have to come visit. <laughs> <laughs> that's, I'm, that's actually I'm not a threat. <laughs> yeah, I'm, no, like I'm legitimately looking to start a business in doing cemetery work. Hey, well, it's, it's guaranteed money. Like taxes, death is one yeah. of the only guarantees in life, sadly. Yep. Yeah, that was quite funny because I was in when I was in London. I was watching telly Sunday night, and they had a documentary about the whole Highgate Vampire Cemetery <laughs> kerfuffle, <laughs> kerfuffle, which is a crazy story if you don't know much about it. I recommend diving into it, and then you'll just shake your head and think, "Jesus Christ, <laughs> 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 the hell was going on there? Wizards fighting you're, in the streets? What? You're gonna yeah. have me going down all these rabbit holes while I'm up tonight." <laughs> Looking up Russian <laughs> scientists and <laughs> British vampires and wizards and <laughs> yeah. All I'll say to you is the Reverend Sean Manchester isn't a reverend, so take everything yeah. else he says with a very large pinch of salt. <laughs> uh, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna ask you one question. Mm -hmm. Bigfoot in the UK, yes or no? No. That's it. Anyway, yep. so our <laughs> Asked and answered. I have I have a follow up question. No, there's no follow up. <laughs> what is your favorite cryptid? Oh, that's actually a decent question. Ooh, uh, I would have to say I absolutely love the Yowie. Ah, and you have a great episode about the Yowie. Yeah, I've done it. I've done a. I've done three on the Yowie, and kind of touched on it when I spoke with Tony Healy as well. But uh, yeah, I did a recent one with Yowie Dan. Done three yes. with him, and one with oh, what was he called? A chap called Nick. Got one of my early episodes. But the the one with Yowie Dan, I think, was about one hundred and sixty five episode one hundred and sixty five because they've just done a brilliant new film called Track, uh, which is a documentary about them going out into the Blue Mountains, which is a real Yowie hotspot down there. So yeah, I love the stories of the Yowies because Oz Aussies are. 
a very salt of the earth people and if a big butch trucker tells you that they've seen an eight foot creature run across the road in front of them i tend to think hmm they probably have yowie is not one you hear a lot no it's yeah. not that's no, i love that episode with yow uh with yowie dan yeah yeah that was yeah. fun yeah great guy and they've got a new they're they're about to release their follow-up to track so keep your eye out that should be out this side of christmas i hope oh sweet all right, uh, we are going to take our break for our featured music today, which comes from, this is going to be interesting, guys, because, um, all right, so it's Fleischkrieg, which is technically a German band, but they are based here in Los Angeles, so, so not exactly local. Close enough. But listen, the song is called Owl Light. I thought it was appropriate. <laughs> 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 it's also really freaking cool so if you're into german industrial have a listen and when we come back we will talk to paul about mysteries and monsters and that's about it really because i'm not going to talk about us you guys hear about us all the time <laughs> Offered to save us all, no eyes are reconniving. Worried, what do we do now? The night is lies. Nothing to see outside, the roads have gone away. Body tight, a steel cage. Doesn't blink an eye My father's away Welcome back The key is to not fight and to just go for it We almost did it in unison That's that's the problem <laughs> Stereo right <laughs> cut that into mono and like have one in one ear one in the other <laughs> <laughs> some weird <laughs> asmr going on there <laughs> anyway yeah how come the boys anyway. don't laugh at that come on Gosh, come on jc man. get us out of the gutter y'all good at that yep <laughs> kiki i feel and like there it is. it's some awkward she, silence <laughs> she says things to get a to get me and cord to go into the gutter like she uh, it's like she's yeah. she's poking a bear like she just yeah. she knows what she's doing but does the yeah. bear have mange that <laughs> <laughs> it caught off an owl this is this has been like three hours of tangent <laughs> and very <laughs> with some stories in between welcome to my normal world <laughs> <laughs> just, how can you explain everything away as it's an animal with mange like just through the cracks of our rant, we do have an episode here. That's <laughs> <laughs> I think it's important to be skeptical about stuff. But when you're... I just can't. I just can't understand that. Like, it's it's more plausible to me that it is an alien being than it is a baby mo albino moose with mange. Like... In Massachusetts. Yeah. <sighs> I mean, if it was in Ontario, that would be a different story. Probably, but I mean, sure. then you get fingers, right? <laughs> <laughs> I think you should always be skeptical about anything. However, just because you're skeptical doesn't mean that any old nonsense is a plausible explanation of it. True. Yeah. Yeah. It's the same thing the other way. A skeptic shouldn't accept just the first answer because it's the first answer. Yeah. Yeah. You'll still see it all the time. It's like people talk stories about people dropping great white sharks into lakes around the US and you point out to them that that's biologically impossible and the shark would die. Yeah. And then you point out that maybe it could have been a bull shark because they can actually survive in fresh water. And then they go, no, oh, no, it was a great white. And you say, well, that's nonsense then. It's not true. It can't be true. Right. Yeah. Like a hundred percent. I've given you a way out and you've still stuck to the nonsense. So good luck with that. 
Because you've got the, yeah. the, the, the incident that Jaws is based on. That's in the New England area, isn't it? Yes. And they yeah. were two bull shark. That was a bull shark that came up a river and, and killed those teenagers. That was, that was actually New Jersey. Yeah. yeah. Jer- Jersey will say that they're not part of New England. Well, it's named after a part of the UK. Exactly. <laughs> you and your Jersey conspiracy. <laughs> <laughs> That's a theoretically we live like 30 minutes from new jersey and i refuse to acknowledge its existence <laughs> <laughs> so right, I, I once witnessed somebody have an argument that australia was in europe and after about an hour they realized that they were arguing about austria austria yeah oh my i was like God. they don't even speak english in austria they speak german <laughs> and he was going about australians and i was like well they speak english well, and then his point. Then his point was, what, why do they speak English if they don't live in Europe? I said, "Where's France?" <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> what? <laughs> what does that even mean? <laughs> exactly. I was very confused. <laughs> you and me both. <laughs> oh my god! But believe it or not, that same argument was made by someone who my sister worked with. She was insistent that she found out that her relatives were actually australian and she went on forever and ever and ever until finally she started talking about food and my sister was like you're not australian you're austrian <laughs> <laughs> schnitzels no they don't need schnitzel in perth what are you talking about unless it's a german <laughs> restaurant <laughs> <laughs> the perth <Sorry>. delicacy <laughs> schnitzel hold on Sorry. let me let me text my friend who lives in perth i swear to god i'll be like <laughs> you guys <laughs> eat schnitzel they're gonna be like, yeah, we love it over here. Throw another schnitzel on the barbie. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna send that audio clip to my friend oh, Dan. Oh, hey. <laughs> that was good. He's gonna die. I'm gonna pass <laughs> out, dude. <laughs> <laughs> we were doing an Australia like kind of episode thing. So mm-hmm. I texted him and I was like, hey, Dan, I'm like, can you go visit this place? Like, how far away is this hotel from where you live? I'm just because I had I didn't Google it. 3000 miles. No, Australia. dude. Yeah. He was like, um, I'd go, but it would take me five and a half hours to drive one way. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, yeah, I I realized that after I texted you and then I Googled it and was like, yeah, no, he can't. He can't go visit yeah. that for us. A lot of people do forget just how bloody big Australia is. It's massive. Yeah. Yeah. Huge. There's a joke there, but I'm not going to say anything. Good. (laughs) Anyway, so, Paul, where can we find your amazing talent? Well, thank you very much. And thank you so much for a a wonderful couple of hours of of random tangents that I've (laughs) fully embraced and gone along with. So thank you very much for putting up with me. Thank you for coming on. We really appreciate it. Yes, oh, we My do. pleasure. My pleasure. Thank you so much. So you can find Mysteries and Monsters across all podcast platforms and across all social media networks. So just look for Mysteries and Monsters and you will find all 210 episodes so far. It's impressive. We aren't at 100 yet, but we're getting there, baby. <laughs> so close. We're so close. <laughs> Not everybody's a glutton for punishment like me. Even COVID <laughs> couldn't keep me off. <laughs> I've, been, I've had I've, I've had a Victorian disease and still managed to do it. <laughs> when I got Quincy, I've had COVID, frozen shoulder, still not missed a week. So no excuses out there, losers. COVID brought me into the game. <laughs> <laughs> True. Yeah. If you if you listen, strangely, as you were mentioned about Anna earlier, if you listen to, I think it was her last appearance. No, it wasn't her last appearance. The appearance before last. If you listen to my intro, you will hear me going. This week on Mysteries of Monsters. Because that had to do the intro for it. And I was five days into COVID. So I'd only just been able to start talking properly again. Even though it sounds oh like I'm, yeah. I'm a troll or something. So, uh, yeah. That's why you all should always have backup episodes recorded. Because you never know what's about to bite you on the backside. Which is what happened when I, yeah, when I did my first interview with Morgan Daimler. And then three days later, I was in hospital with Quincy. Oh, gosh. Yeah. <laughs> which is a feeling. And that, strangely enough, they gave me such powerful painkillers that some fairies came to visit me at five o'clock before I passed out unconscious, smiling. Ooh. That's what fairies do, you know? <laughs> yeah. I think they gave me the magic, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> K-9 
came to check on me. That was a fun night. That and you also are m- most of our listeners probably know by now that you're also one half of the Ghost Story guys. Yes, yeah, uh, almost two years now. I know. Incredibly. So uh, right. uh, yeah, that's crazy. I know. So yeah, do that as well with with Bren and and obviously help him as uh, pull all kinds of crazy stories together, and we get some lovely correspondence from listeners and things i really do enjoy that and it let, lets me lighten up and and uh i don't have to sort of beat myself up to do research i can just kind of dive into the script and stuff so brenda's all the heavy lifting on that bit so it's uh it's great fun and, and as you may have gathered today uh the show may last an hour and a half but usually we talk for four hours so <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> So uh, I think when I started on the show, Bren, Bren was usually doing hours, hour-long episodes, and now we tend to be nearer two, So because uh, uh, we just disappear down many a rabbit hole and tangent. So uh, it's it's great fun, and, and obviously it's been a wonderful relationship. Bren's been very supportive since I started podcasting and, and helped me out a lot, and obviously I'm deeply humbled to have written the foreword for his new book, the, the re-release and updated version of A Strange Little Place. Uh, it's on its way to me right now. So, uh, so yeah, I was very humble to uh, to be asked to do that. So that was rather nice. And then I've had several other things in the pipeline. So um, I've been offered a, a column in a paranormal publication, and uh, and we'll see what happens with that as well. So, uh, and uh, my first live invitation as well next year. I've been asked to speak at a, a paranormal conference here in the UK for my uh, first one as well. So yeah, it's uh, it's, it's a very nice end to the year. So that's for 2023? Yeah, September 2023. Awesome. So I'm, I'm just going to wait until I get invited to a Bigfoot conference. <laughs> <laughs> But don't Buy me have, in. Uh, yeah, we have a big foot. I'm going to do it this gonna, way, right? I am going <laughs> to make you come to Alba Twitch Day at least. Alba Twitch Day. That's yeah. Oh, so there's so many things. I'm I'm insanely jealous. I often think I was born in the wrong country these days because I, I, you know, especially where, where I live and, and my obsession with uh, you know, American cryptids as well. So I've got no excuse because I've got family not far from you guys over the border in London, in Canada. So um, it's it's all pretty close, really, and uh, I've got invitations to to go bigfooting in the Pacific Northwest and down in Texas and Florida and and stuff. So uh, I, I'm going to have to uh, come back to the states because I've not been for nearly twenty years now. Yeah, you know yeah. we we got you covered if you come down to Philly. So oh, I will definitely come. I've got to try a proper cheesesteak. Right. Yes, not about that. Not <laughs> at Pat and Gino's. Yeah, don't no. go to those That's tourists. That's the tourists. <laughs> we'll you get you a real cheesesteak. Yeah, we'll steer you in the right direction. Right, <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'll do rocky steps and cheese steak. But the best is when you have like a, a hot pretzel, like kind of in your mm. like wrap around your finger oh, in oh, one yeah. hand, and then you got the cheesesteak in the other, and you're on the art his yeah the art steps, and yeah, you're you're golden. Yeah. Take a photo. Boom. Yeah. See, I'm one of those weird English people that loves pretzels. <gasps> See, I love I love a good hot pretzel. Mm, I can, oh, mm, I love me a pretzel. So who's coming up? So my next episode will be with the author Carol Scott talking about the cryptids of Oceana, which is a subject <gasps> I've not really touched on outside of Australia. So I'm looking forward to that. Uh, and then the following week, Lyle Blackburn is returning to talk about his latest book. Bigfoot in Texas. Oh, nice. Lyle's awesome. All right. So taking us out today again is going to be Fleischkrieg with their song Owl Light. And you can find all their music on Bandcamp and they're on Spotify. And as always, stay spooky and don't die. But if you do, contact us. And I would recommend scrolling a message in Owl Blood on a naked cryptid you can't explain. My On the road, off to save us all Our lives are way behind the wheel Our fate's over